Hello and welcome to the Medjlis Podcast, Radio for Europe, Radio Liberty's current affairs talk show focusing on Central Asia. I'm Bruce Kinnear, host of the Medjlis and author of the Central Asia and Focus newsletter. It's been nearly three years since the Taliban returned to power in Afghanistan. It was an unwelcome event in many parts of the world. When the Taliban were in power in the late 1990s, most of the Central Asian governments viewed the Afghan group as a threat and were glad to see them chased from power in late 2001. But after the Taliban again seized Afghanistan in 2021, most of the Central Asian governments took an entirely different approach to the Taliban. Trade has been steadily growing between Central Asia and Afghanistan, and Central Asian officials regularly meet with Taliban representatives to discuss cooperation in major projects. Of course, there are still some sore points in relations between the Taliban and several Central Asian states. To discuss all this, I am joined by Kadir Habib, Director of RFARL's Afghan Service, known locally as Azadi, Pahlawan Turgunov, Managing Editor at RFARL's Uzbek Service, known locally as Azadlik, and Farooq Sufi, Director of RFARL's Turkmen Service, known locally as Azadlik. Thank you all for joining me. Kadir, I'd like to start with you. In 2001, uh, after September 11th, when the U.S. started its operations in Afghanistan, if I wanted to visit Afghanistan and I lived in Central Asia, if I wanted to cross the border, bring something across the border for trade, uh, what was the situation? Where where would I go? Were there places where there was there any connection between Central Asia and Afghanistan? Uh, 2001 uh, was a big change uh, when it comes to uh, relation between Afghanistan and Central Asian countries. Uh, Bruce, as you mentioned uh, in the intro, before that, uh, from 1996 to 2001, the relationship between the Central Asian countries and Afghanistan was complex and varied among the different nations. Uh, like Uzbekistan and Tajikistan, they were supporting uh, the uh, Taliban opposition that co- that time called Northern Alliance. And Turkmenistan um, adopted a neutral stance uh, toward the Taliban at that time as well. Uh, Kazakhstan and Kyrgyzstan, they had limited direct involvement with the Taliban government uh, compared to their neighbors. So after 2001, uh, the situation uh, um, uh, after a democratic government in Afghanistan has been established. So all the countries in the region, including the Central Asian countries, were looking forward for cooperation um, to benefit from a stable Afghanistan uh, particularly when it comes to trade and transit. And uh, so, so a door was open for uh, all these countries to connect with Afghanistan and engage with Afghanistan. And so the, many negotiations and meetings started with uh, Afghan government, newly established Afghan government at that time. So they trade started to increase every year, I would say, uh, with the neighboring countries. And uh, there has been agreements on big projects like energy and transit. All the, uh, the, the, the main or mega projects that we are talking about today here uh, and uh, Taliban governments, uh, government is in, in, in contact with the Central Asian countries today, like uh, the uh, Afghan trans um, project between Uzbekistan and Afghanistan, which is going to uh, open a transit railway uh, from uh, 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 Hairatan, to uh, uh, connect with Uzbekistan, uh, to, Uzbek- to connect Uzbekistan with Pakistan, and another uh, 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 railway link between Turgandi and Herat province with Turkmenistan railway, and uh, Khaf and uh, and Iran to Herat. All these projects were agreed upon during this, uh, after 2001 and during the last two decades. 
So, but the main obstacle on the way of implementation of these projects were the instability in the country. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Pakalan, I want to go to you now. Um, you know, the, there was a bridge built across the Amudarya River connecting Uzbekistan and Afghanistan back in the Soviet days. It was closed prior to, uh, for I think most of the 90s, um, certainly by the end of the 90s, it was closed entirely. Uh, but it's reopened. And now it, it started out as a big, is, is really the major connection between Central Asia and Afghanistan. It, it still is, probably. Um, can you talk about how trade you know what, what? What does trade look like along the border right now? Uh, in ter- both rail and road. You know, we know that the Uzbek National Railway Company is actually maintaining and repairing the line, the railway line, all the way to Mazar e Sharif. So, what what's trade look like along the border now? Yes, um, uh, the government of President Mirziyoyev has taken totally different approach. Uh, uh, totally opposite of the one uh, we saw in the ni- uh, uh, late 1990s. If you remember, uh, Mirziyoyev told the parliament that uh, he would do business with anyone as long as they don't point gun at Uzbekistan. And the project you just mentioned, a repair project, uh, actually kicked off uh, in February last year. And the Uzbek side offered uh, a generous discount of 50% according to the Uzbekistan Railway pro- uh, the report. Um, during a meeting earlier this month, I think uh, on July 4th, the head of the Uzbek Railways uh, mentioned that they are committed to uh, carrying out uh, uh, kind of high quality repairs at a reasonable price. And Uzbeks, uh, apart from the, that, Uzbeks are now training employees of the Afghan uh, railway as well, where they also providing kind of uh, waivers for road and uh, uh, rail transportations. And uh, 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 President Mirziyoyev keeps emphasizing how crucial this uh, uh, the, the, the project is. Uh, they are doing everything they can uh, to get Afghanistan involved and uh, make it a key part of regional dynamic. Uh, in the past two years, Afghanistan has become one of Uzbekistan's top 10 uh, foreign, uh, foreign trade partners, uh, considering that uh, there was uh, no trade between uh, the two countries until 2017, while um, only humanitarian goods were crossing the border sent by the Western countries and the UN. Um, uh, this is a huge deal, I think. And I've been looking at the uh, structure of the uh, exports and imports between Uzbekistan and Afghanistan based on 2022 data. Uzbekistan apparently primarily exporting wheat flour, electricity, and uh, refined petroleum uh, to Afghanistan while importing uh, raw cotton, nuts, and dried fruits from Afghanistan. And Uzbekistan's exports to Afghanistan um, uh, totaled around uh, uh, 800 million, though uh, uh, some data suggest it, it could be as high as uh, $900 million. And this makes Afghanistan Uzbekistan's eighth uh, largest uh, foreign trade uh, partner. I think um, uh, it's worth noting that Uzbekistan's export of electricity to Afghanistan has sparked quite uh, a debate in Uzbekistan's social uh, uh, media. Some people find it controversial because uh, particularly during the winter season when uh, many Uzbeks face uh, themselves face uh, severe electricity shortages. Um, however, the government of Uzbekistan uh, stress that uh, Uzbekistan has both uh, contractual obligation and the uh, moral obligation to assist the people of Afghanistan. As they say, uh, you don't get to choose your uh, neighbors. I've been told that if you nowadays, if you travel to the border with Afghanistan, to the Termas city, um, where the Hayraton Bridge is, uh, you would see lots of lots of Afghans. Um, opening uh, businesses there, medium and small businesses, particularly uh, uh, restaurants, uh, bed and breakfast hotels, etc. So there is uh, lots of trade uh, going on between two countries. Okay, thank you very much, um, Farouk. I'd like to, I'd like you to tell us a little bit about trade with the with Afghanistan post 
uh, you know, after August 2021. But but one of the things that's really curious for me about the the relationship between Turkmenistan and and the current Afghan regime is that Turkmenistan doesn't really put much um, doesn't engage in projects where it outside its borders. Right. I guess that's the way I want to put it. You don't see Turkmenistan actually going and, and you know, taking a, a very active role in building something outside the Turkmen borders. But that's not really the case with Afghanistan. Right. This is something kind of different. I mean, they're building the railroad to Herat, uh, other things. So what's what's trade look like now between um, Taliban ruled Afghanistan and Turkmenistan? Yeah, uh, you are right. The Tur- Turkmen government is, uh, I mean, uh, we know that it's quite isolated from the <clears throat> outside world. And when it comes to uh, Taliban government, uh, and you, even during the Ashraf Ghani government, um, the, they were, uh, th- there was some, some sort of engagement and uh, they always um, were touting the, those relationships because uh, Turkmen, uh, frankly, they were always uh, wary of uh, of uh, Afghans. And uh, post post uh, uh, twenty August twenty twenty one uh, relations, um, they were quite um, warmer. Uh, um, fr- if you look from uh, from uh, uh, outside. Uh, their relations were warmer towards uh, the, the new Taliban government, and uh, Turkmenistan created, uh, um, tried and strived to, to create good relationships with uh, with the new government in in Kabul. Uh, and the trade, uh, when it comes to trade, um, Turkmenistan never uh, openly talks about what it's selling out, what it's exporting to any country. So that people keep its own population in the, in the dark of what's uh, uh, how how much and what the government is selling and how much money it's uh, uh, acquiring from that export. But from what we know, uh, Turkmenistan sends a lot of uh, electricity to uh, uh, Afghanistan, a fuel and uh, liquefied gas. Uh, in recent in years, they they increased the from what we hear, the volume of uh, uh, liquefied liquefied gas uh, that's being sent to Afghanistan. What's the dollar value of uh, of uh, that export? We don't know. It's hard to say. As I, as I said, Turkmenistan never uh, you know, announces th- those kind of n- numbers. And uh, one of the main topics between like in this engagement with the Afghan uh, government led by Taliban is uh, Tapi and recently uh, uh, Afghan uh, publications Afghan internet sites like Tolo News and others they uh, uh, reported that the uh, Turkmen uh, ambassador in Kabul uh, uh, Haja Avezov met with uh, uh, Afghan Acting Foreign Minister uh, Mutaki, and they discussed uh, the T- T- Tapi project. And the Af- Afghan government said that they are finalizing this legal paperwork, legal framework uh, to start building, to start actually constructing the the pipeline. But, I mean, this kind of uh, words were there ever since Taliban came to power. And moreover, mo- moreover, it was uh, um, these words we heard. Uh, during uh, Ashraf Ghani's uh, government. And uh, <clears throat> this uh, rhetoric never materialized in um, uh, uh, in real work uh, in Afghanistan. As we know, the biggest uh, part of the uh, TAPI project uh, lays through Afghan territory and it hasn't started. And moreover, it, it's, it remains how, what's the Pakistan and Indian government's approach to this project, they seem to be a little cold. Like they, they, their interest cooled down to, towards this uh, uh, project. And frankly, uh, Turkmenistan itself now is trying to find new uh, routes for, for its gas exports. They're talking with uh, Azerbaijan, they're talking with Turkey, and recently they even uh, signed uh, a new um, memorandum of, of understanding about 
a gas pipeline uh, into Iran, a new gas pi- pipeline into Iran. So the Turkmen government itself seems not so optimistic about the prospects of of Tapi project. But there is significant uh, uh, engagement, trade engagement between the two two sides. But uh, we don't know the all the all the details about the volume, uh, dollar volume, and the uh, volume of e- export itself. Uh, let me ask a quick question. When I know the Turkmen government and Turkmen state media don't mention any of these meetings, or they rarely do. How what words do they use to describe the Taliban government? Did they ever use the word Taliban? They, they, oh, no, they don't use uh, the word Taliban. They say Afghan government, or they say Afghan uh, officials, Afghan representatives. But even uh, when this kind of engagement happens, they they don't report about it. Like the the state media doesn't report about the meetings or any any talks with uh, with uh, uh, the Taliban government. Uh, only. Uh, sometimes we hear from uh, the regional media, including the Afghan media, when there is uh, that kind of th- these kind of talks. Like uh, earlier this year, there were <clears throat> uh, a few reports on uh, Afghan media and uh, like Kyrgyz media and Kazakh media who were uh, reporting that Afghanistan requested, for example, increase of uh, electricity. Uh, 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 exports from from Turkmenistan and at the moment according to those reports uh, Turkmenistan increased the ex- electricity export to some uh, 1.8 billion kilowatts uh, a year uh, to, to Afghanistan while its own population is uh, experiencing experiencing shortage of electricity the power outages became very regular in Turkmenistan but which of course uh, annoys the local population inside Turkmenistan that uh, the government is not providing its own population but sending a lot of uh, electricity to Afghanistan primarily and, and other countries. Yeah, that sounds similar to what uh, Paklawan was just telling us. Paklawan, I want to ask you the same question though about how the how does Uzbek government and media describe the government in Afghanistan? Do they use the word Taliban? Uh, they usually refer um, as the uh, Afghan government led by Taliban, and they often use Taliban delegation. Okay, thank you. Uh-huh. Great, thank you. Um, Kadir, we've been talking a lot about electricity. How much electricity does, does Afghanistan receive from Central Asia? Well, um, there are... Uh a couple of projects, uh, major power infrastructure project is CASA 1000, um, you, with which uh, the uh, um, Afghanistan, uh, Pakistan uh, are taking advantage of the energy from the Central Asian countries. It is a 1.2 billion infrastructure project, which makes it uh, possible to Kyrgyz Republic and Tajikistan to export uh, 1,300 megawatts of uh, hydraulic power to Afghanistan and Pakistan. And then uh, there is also TOP, the power uh, interconnection uh, project between Pakistan, Afghanistan, and Turkmenistan, which is sort of a complementary project to the CASA 1000. And it allows uh, power trade between the two countries. And also there is another project, uh, TOTA, which is include uh, um, Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, Afghanistan, Pakistan. And uh, the, the major power transmission line designed to improve energy security and efficiency uh, to uh, meet the increasing electricity demand in um, South Asian countries. Uh, so, um, and, and, and Pakistan, particularly during the summer, uh, where they are facing uh, constraint with comes to electricity and use of electricity. People are uh, during the summer using more and more uh, electricity for cooling and uh, 
due to high temperature. So there are three projects. Uh, so these all projects are major and important for the energy uh, uh, transmission and transfer from Central Asian countries to Afghanistan and Pakistan. Okay, thank you. Um, let me ask you a question to get your opinion on this. Uh, Afghanistan has six neighbors, right? So um, we know the situation with Pakistan is not great. We don't have time to go into the problems they've had. It's been tense with Iran uh, since the Taliban came to power, although it seems to be getting a little better. The Chinese border with Afghanistan is very small and in a, rebo- in a remote area. Would you think, would you say it's fair to, to say that the Taliban relationships with Central Asia are the best relations they have with, with any of its their neighbors? Well, uh, looking on to the facts on the ground, it seems so, particularly uh, the approach of, uh, let's say, if uh, we uh, the, the look into the uh, policy and approach of pragmatic, I will call it, pragmatic policy and approach of the Central Asian countries toward Afghanistan, they, are, they have a sort of more, I, I agree with you, better, it, it, we can call it better than Pakistan and sort of Iran uh, at the moment while we are talking. But these countries also have their own concerns which is mostly coming uh, from the spread of extremism and militancy uh, across their borders from Afghanistan. And if we look at the the latest uh, report from the UN Security Council, it mentions uh, the presence of uh, those militant or extremist groups that uh, could be considered threat for uh, the Central Asian countries, such as IMU and uh, uh, Jamaat al Ansar. Uh, to, 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 for instance, IMU is the Islamic movement of Uzbekistan, um, uh, and also the threat from ISK. So they have their concerns. But they also uh, acknowledge that the threat that existed during the last two decades, uh, they couldn't do the trade or transit, uh, or they couldn't took the full advantage of trade and transit from Afghanistan to South Asia and to get access to Arabian Sea. So that threat is now gone, which was the Taliban. Now the Taliban are the guarantor of those projects that we already mentioned, like the Afghan trans um, project or other project, which is include Turkmenistan or Tajikistan. But these countries are still sort of having a oversight of the situation are also they are keeping their borders sort of tight or keeping open eye on the security situation and who is entering to these countries. Uh, So they are looking forward to take uh, the best advantage of this situation now because Taliban are in power, they are not anymore the threat uh, to trade and transit, but in the meantime, they have there some uh, observation and uh, I would say their concerns. Okay, thank you. Uh, and I want to be clear too that we haven't talked much about Tajikistan. We don't have anyone from the Tajik service on the program, but of course, Tajikistan's relationship with the Taliban is very different. Uh, they are the outlier among the Central Asian states who really don't engage with the Taliban, uh, or certainly to the the least amount possible. Uh, and a reminder: um, we're talking about Central Asia's relations with the Taliban, with Taliban-ruled Afghanistan. And my guests are Paklawan Turguna, managing editor at RFERL's Uzbek service, known locally as Azad Lik. 
Farouk Yusupi, Director of RFARL's Turkmen Service, known locally as Azatlik, and Kadir Habib, uh, Director of RFARL's Afghan Service, known locally as Azadi. Uh, thank you. Um, let's talk a little bit about security. We'll, we'll continue in that vein because I'm curious. Um, uh, Paco, I want to start with you. I think you you put it well when you said that part of the agreement was that the, no one in Afghanistan will point the gun at, at Uzbekistan. Oh, it hasn't always worked out like that. And some of these groups that that, uh, uh, that Kadir just mentioned are certainly concerning to the Uzbek government. What level of cooperation, if any, is there between the Uzbek government and the Taliban concerning these uh, militant groups that are outside the Taliban control, or, or at least they're worried that they could be outside the Taliban's control? Well, well, well. In the past, Afghanistan was seen um, as a main source of uh, religious extremism and destabilization in the country. Nowadays, the only um, statements um, about possible kind of uh, threat, threat of uh, ISIS, threat of uh, other groups such as IMU, is coming from Russia. And uh, during their visits uh, recently, um, I mean, Russian officials, every time they visit Uzbekistan, they do stress uh, the threat coming from Afghanistan. But uh, Uzbek government uh, has never responded to this kind of uh, threat or, 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 or statements or warnings. I should say that uh, not everyone is happy uh, with uh, how the government of Uzbekistan has been handling its relationship with the Taliban. Um, some people argue that it could uh, send the uh, wrong message to uh, certain segments of the population about accepting the uh, Taliban's interpretation of Islam, uh, potentially uh, leading to the radicalization of some people I- inside Uzbekistan. Uh, there are have been reports of people in uh, Samarkand, if you remember, a couple of years ago, uh, saluting a, a, a Taliban delegation during uh, Friday prayers. And... Uh, Last year, there was uh, news of a, a Taliban delegation visiting the Muslim board of Uzbekistan, which is uh, the official religious body of Uzbekistan, to discuss religious exchanges, exchanges without uh, specifying details. However, uh, during these interactions, the Uzbek government uh, has been uh, actively cracking down on uh, uh, religious symbols uh, lately, over the past year, there have been um, closures of uh, uh, shops and restaurants in Tashkent run by uh, religious individuals uh, displaying kind of Arabic or religious names. Uh, uh, in my view, this suggests that uh, while Uzbekistan and Uzbek government is engaging with the Taliban and the broader Islamic world uh, to attract investment, which they need badly to implement so-called uh, the uh, the reforms, economic, social reforms announced by President Mirziyoyev. They are also um, uh, cautious about the kind of societal uh, impact uh, it might have. Mm-hmm. Okay, thank you. I'm Farouk. Uh, you know, obviously we don't get a huge amount of, of information out of Turkmenistan, but um, you know, when uh, before the Taliban returned to power in August 2021, there were problems along the Turkmen-Afghan border, right? And, yeah, and, there, there were. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, there were a few incidents uh, during the previous uh, Afghan government when uh, um, there were shootouts on on the border with uh, multiple multiple ca- casualties, at least on Turkmen side. Uh, uh, there were uh, in, at one case uh, there were 25 people, 25 uh, Turkmen border guards uh, were killed, and in, in another case, another uh, couple dozen uh, border guards were killed. But even after Taliban uh, came uh, uh, to power, there were a few incidents with less casualties uh, when. Um, uh, uh, Turkmen uh, border guards uh, came into uh, in, uh, contact or into uh, uh, shootout with, uh, with uh, lo- smaller uh, smaller militant groups in, in Afghanistan, and uh, but the sides, uh, but Turkmen and Afghan side or Taliban side rather, they managed somehow to uh, calm down the. Uh, the emotions between uh, 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 in those situations, 
And Turk- Turkmenistan is, the Turkmen government is uh, very wary of uh, the potential threat that's, that might come from the militant groups in Afghanistan. And uh, at the moment, we hear that Turkmen government turns a blind eye uh, uh, into uh, intrusions by uh, the Afghans into Turkmen, Turkmen territory. A couple of months ago, we reported that uh, not militant groups, but uh, like ordinary uh, Afghan citizens were penetrating in, inside uh, Turkmen uh, territory uh, just uh, to, 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 for their cattle to graze on the, uh, on the Turkmen fields. And the Turkmen government did not uh, take any action uh, towards that in order not to provoke any, any potential, uh, potential troubles. So at the moment, they are, both sides are trying very, very hard and uh, very diligently to not cause any, any troubles. In this matter, Turkmenistan is, uh, uh, being uh, is more compromising, uh, uh, if you want, to, to towards uh, the, the Afghan side, and uh, from what we hear uh, from our uh, observers inside the country, most of the trade, uh, the the uh, uh, I mean good good conditions in trade for for Afghanistan are created in order to appease. Uh, the Taliban government, so the Taliban government uh, keeps the, its citizens in check so that they don't cause any problems on, on the, Turkmen, the Turkmen border. Okay, thank you. Um, and, and you three are the perfect three to discuss this next topic. Um, Kadir, could you tell me about the Kosh Tepe Canal, please? Sure, thank you. Uh, so this is uh, one of the mega projects that Taliban are pushing uh, for its development uh, in the in the region, and I think it, it is uh, one of the most uh, significant projects uh, for irrigating uh, the um, uh, the desert uh, in 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 northern part of the country and northwestern part and. Mm-hmm. The, the the 150 mile project uh, is 15 sorry 115 mile project it's Koshtepa Canal is considered important for uh, the agriculture uh, production in Afghanistan so Taliban um, kept uh, pushing with this project uh, it continue. Um, however, the second phase is also started, but after the start of the second phase, we haven't heard much. Uh, the completion of the first phase was hugely uh, promoted by the Taliban and media. Uh, their deputy prime minister, uh, Abdul Ghani brother, uh, he uh, inaugurated the project. Uh, it seems that there were some doubts that due to the uh, volume of this project, it will be difficult for the Taliban to fund it, to complete this project. And so we haven't heard uh, much after the second phase of the project has started, but time to time, there are reports coming out uh, from the uh, state-run media that the project continue, but this project became a source of concern um, beside the optimism about the trade and transit between the countries, uh, Central Asian countries and Afghanistan under the Taliban. This project became uh, like a source of concern, particularly for Uzbekistan and Turkmenistan. Uh, because uh, the, 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 these countries are um, mostly relying uh, for the irrigation and uh, on, on this water in Afghanistan, due to the instability uh, in the past four decades, was not included um, 
in the water agreements among the Central Asian countries. So now there is a concern that uh, by the completion of this project, uh, it may divert 15 to 20 percent of Amudaria from Central Asia to Northern Afghanistan. Okay, thank you. Um, and certainly, it it is the you know it's the legal and moral right of that of Afghanistan to take their share of the water. Central Asia has been for a long time. Um, you mentioned decades since the Soviet era. Pakalwan, what does the to- Kosh Tepe Canal mean for Uzbekistan? Well, uh, according to estimates made by Uzbekistan's Water Management Agency, once completed, Afghanistan will be receiving uh, around 15% of the water of Amudarya River. Currently, I think it stands at around 7%. Um, Uzbekistan's stance on the construction of the Qoshtepe Canal um, has been uh, quite interesting. Uh, initially, there were some uh, pretty strong statements from uh, both sides when the construction started two years ago. And uh, President Mirjayev said it was a big concern for Uzbekistan, especially since the uh, country was uh, already dealing with uh, severe water shortages even before the construction began. But then uh, the tone shifted to uh, something uh, more constructive and Uzbekistan even offered to help uh, with uh, a project. It is uh, still unclear what interest Uzbekistan might have in the uh, Koshtepe Canal's construction or what kind of uh, help they uh, could offer. They uh, said they would be... um, there was a delegation head by the regional governor of Sukhandaria region, and he said that they will be establishing kind of working group which would uh, uh, offer a help uh, in the construction of the canal. But uh, uh, the rhetoric has definitely changed since then. There might be kind of some uh, behind the scenes uh, discussions happening, but uh, we haven't heard anything from uh, Uzbek officials over the uh, the past year about the canal. Uh, I believe they uh, still view it negatively and uh, think it will uh, have an uh, uh, adverse effect, impact on Uzbekistan. Um, but it seems like uh, they decided to focus on projects of uh, mutual interest, like the uh, trans afghan Corridor Railway Project, instead of uh, getting stuck on uh, controversial issues uh, for now. Okay, thank you. Um, let's go downstream a little more. Farouk, what does this mean for Turkmenistan? I mean, they, Turkmenistan they, it keeps its cards close to the vest, as they say. They don't really say very much about it, but they actually have made statements about responsible use of water without pointing the finger at the Taliban or something. But, you know, if it, it's following Turkmenistan, this is almost a sign of panic for them to even mention that they hope their neighbors use water responsibly. Uh, what's happening with the Turkmen government and their reaction to this? Yeah, the, uh, so far Turkmenistan never openly uh, spoke about Koshtepa Canal. Yeah, as you uh, rightly mentioned, they only indirectly hinted that they are, uh, they are concerned, uh, saying that everyone should uh, should use responsibly. And they even um, after the uh, this uh, issue came to onto the agenda, they conducted. Um, some sort of a conference that they, they called international conference. Of course, it was not an international conference, and they were talking about uh, responsible use of uh, water uh, reservoirs of the region, and so on and so forth. All like all words, and but uh, what we hear behind the scenes, they are trying to uh, convince uh, a Taliban government to be uh, to be cautious or to be. Uh, to uh, approach to, to this issue with a common sense so that uh, they don't cause a big disaster. Because uh, like, if uh, the Koshtepe Canal will uh, uh, take up to 20% of, that, of the water from Amudaria, uh, that will mean, according to uh, the uh, hydro uh, specialists close to the government who used to work for, for the government, it, it will mean up to 50% of deficit, water deficit uh, for uh, Turkmenistan from, from the current volumes, uh, which 
is already uh, I mean, the, the current volumes of water for irrigation and other purposes is all, already in, in uh, the different scarcity of, of water uh, in Turkmenistan. But from the current volumes, it can decrease up to 50%. And this is really worrying for, 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 for the Turkmen government and and uh, it is uh, it is um, a real real uh, danger, real threat for for the survival of of uh, of, of the country, because uh, uh, Amudaria is the only major water reservoir, water res- water source that uh, Turkmenistan uses for uh, agriculture and for uh, for consumption, like the drinking water. Okay, thank you. Um, we're, we're coming to the end of the show. Um, I would love to talk about this topic uh, on and on, and I'm sure we'll get back to it again in a future program. But let me just ask you all to answer one question, um, which is, it's, it is almost three years since the Taliban are back in power. Our relations with, uh, in, you can deal with your countries uh, individually, our relations still fragile with Taliban ruled Afghanistan or stable and, and likely to get better in your opinion? And I'll start with you, Farouk. Uh, they are uh, uncertain, I would say. I mean, uh, fragile, I don't know, but they are uncertain. And definitely, I mean, the development, uh, which direction it will develop, uh, definitely does not depend on Turkmen Turkmen government. It more depends on uh, 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 Taliban government uh, and uh, uh, because uh, everyone in Turkmenistan knows that there is nothing much that they can do, and they know that um, the Taliban government is unpredictable because they are new uh, in the uh, regional politics, and uh, you never know how, like, how, what, what kind of decisions and what kind of conclusions they might come uh, in this or that uh, that issue. Okay, thank you. Pakhlawan, Uzbek-Afghan relations with the Taliban in power. Fragile, stable, uh, what, do you, what do you think? Well, um, as Farouk rightly uh, pointed out, a lot depends on uh, Taliban and on the ability to control the situation in Afghanistan. And uh, by uh, offering kind of economic incentives, Uzbeks have been hoping that um, the Taliban would uh, uh, keep the uh, the threat coming from different Islamic groups uh, 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 at base, and uh, uh, Uzbeks uh, has been offering a range of in- incentives to help build um, uh, the 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 trans-Afghan uh, corridor, for example, and this would eventually help them gain gain to uh, access to ports in Afghan Pakistan, and from there the world markets. And uh, Uzbek government is definitely determined to start to complete this project and they really view uh, the Trans-Afghan Corridor as a game uh, changer for trade and regional cooperation. They are doing everything they can um, to get Afghanistan involved and uh, make it a key part of regional dynamics and they are at the forefront of kind of regional um, dip- dip- diplomacies uh, with Taliban. I think um, they did play some role, uh, for example, in Kazakhstan's decision to uh, remove uh, 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 Taliban from its list of uh, terrorist organizations. Well, uh, so far, uh, they've been uh, managing uh, the thing. I mean, by offering the kind of economic incentives, they've been uh, managing uh, the good relations with Taliban. But uh, 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 as we mentioned earlier, a lot depends on the Taliban's uh, ability to control uh, the whole territory of Af- Af- Afghanistan and uh, to uh, the ability to control uh, specifically those uh, 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 extremist uh, elements inside the country, which which uh, which uh, which is seen um, uh, as a threat by by the uh, countries uh, in Central Asia. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, uh, Kadir. I'm going to give you the last word. Um, to, and you can you can deal individually with Turkmenistan and Uzbekistan if you wish, or Central Asia regionally. Are are Taliban's relations with those countries fragile or stable and getting better? Well, uh, my colleagues put it very well. Um, they elaborated uh, very well on, on this um, 
to your question. But I would like to add that there is one thing that the Taliban are the Taliban government is not recognized by any other government yet, including the Central Asian countries. So the Central Asian countries, Afghanistan's neighbors, they are focusing mostly right now on economy and economic projects. So they are, these countries are sort of having a conservative approach uh, toward the Taliban government in Afghanistan. They are looking how the situation will evolve over the coming one or two or several years. So how stable Afghanistan will remain. Because even if we are talking about this Afghan Uzbek uh, uh, trans railway or corridor, so these projects, they need like billions of dollars of investment. Like this project in particular, it's need this trans Afghan railway project needs seven billion dollar of investment, and for to attract that investment, I think they need outside investment from countries such as Gulf countries, Persian Gulf like UAE, Qatar were involved in some negotiations with Uzbek authorities, for instance. If they are not assured. For the of the long term stability in the country, so I don't think that these countries or investors will be willing to invest that amount uh, on these projects. So overall, the relation between the uh, the Taliban government and the uh, Central Asian countries. Uh, particularly today we are discussing Uzbekistan and Turkmenistan, is sort of, I, I can't call it very stab, stable, but we will see it over the, we will, we will see that what will happen in the next few years. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, and thank you, Farooq, Kadir, and Pakhlawan for being on the program. And a big thank you, as always, to Nathan Shoemaker, our Medjlis podcast producer in Washington, D.C. And a reminder, you can subscribe to the Medjlis podcast or the Central Asia and Focus newsletter by visiting Radio for Europe, Radio Liberty's website at rfarl.org. Thanks, and see you in a couple weeks. Bye-bye.